Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this podcast slash webinar. Uh, if you're watching on recorded, welcome. Uh, I am Florent Flossi uh, from Monkeys Fitness, and I am about to share an experience with you. I am about to share an experience with you about the last 12 months where I have stopped drinking totally. Uh, it may change, it may uh, sound uh, very normal for some and like a challenge, a real challenge for others. So bear with me, I will share here a little bit of my experience uh, more towards the end and more than anything I will develop about the, the the job of the hormones, what the hormones do, and how the hormones keep us alive, and what is the consequence of the drinking on the endocrine system, on the hormones. And, and I will finish up by my own, my own experience, how I live that, and, and what have been the, the consequences about it. So guys, uh, Monkeys Fitness, we are providing uh, yoga and Pilates classes around the French Riviera itself in French, English, Spanish, Polish, and Russian. And we are providing personal training and group training as well. So if you are around here, don't hesitate in um, in hitting us with a message, private messages, follow us on Facebook, and we, you will be welcome to join one of our classes. If you are outside the French Riviera, or if you sail a lot around with your boat, and you cannot stick with one uh, place to train, we have as well this uh, Monkeys Fitness app which is really new, where we actually uh, remotely coach and train people following a routine that we create ourselves, uh, where you can actually watch all the videos of the exercises. And if you're not sure about your technique, you can record yourself, and we will actually uh, make the correction um, and make sure you're not hurting yourself while you are training. So this is new, this is called online coaching and you are very welcome as well to join us, to uh, hit us and start a conversation with us um, in case you, you want uh, to carry your PT in your suitcase. Okay, because I'm a little bit too big to fit in your suitcase but I can follow you in your phone. And uh, finally, a uh, new activity uh, that Monkeys Fitness is really proud of is that we are now part of a platform that buys products directly in, from small companies based in France. Most of them are uh, with natural products. They are, they are bio, or they are really a short circuit. And we resell them uh, directly to to the person who's gonna consume them, to the client. So we shortcut the big, large distribution uh, brands. So we are very proud of this. We sell any kind of cleaning products, whatever product you use for uh, shower gel and toothpaste and tea and uh, food supplement. So the same if you are based on the French Riviera and you want to, to make a better world, then you are very welcome to, uh, to hit us with a message and we'll make sure we will uh, sell you some uh, eco-friendly products. I've seen a lot of uh, washing machine running on yachts with uh, chemicals as a soap and all of this is rejected into the ocean and I see so many people on Facebook posting stuff about uh, environment and it doesn't take a lot to actually change a brand or change your provider and buy natural products 
and reject the whole season natural product into the ocean. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. It's not because you work on a motorboat that is uh, uh, polluting a lot that you have to pollute even more. Uh, you can actually make a little improvement into the world. And so I think this is a, this is a really good concept. If you guys want uh, more information, just be aware. I can uh, just provide you the, the products at the back of your boat. Um, and yes, you will not pay more expensive, probably less. You pay cheaper because they are on short circuit directly from the company to me, to you. Okay, so we're shortcutting a lot of uh, other entities. Let's start with uh, what I was saying, how a good way to uh, actually uh, save the earth and pollute less, if not uh, stopping drinking. We don't realize, but it has a huge impact. So why I call this um, tonight, the tonight video, how I spent the last 12 months we, without drinking a drop of alcohol. Uh, if I have to, to make a little backup, until the age of 21, I was a competitor with long weeks training and weekends competitions. And I was leaving all the energy on the table and following strict diet. Karate, cycling, football, gym, table tennis were part of the sports I used to practice. I was really busy. Uh, when I was 20, I counted up to 20 hours of sport per week. Uh, which is pretty, pretty big. And then by the age of 22, I stopped. I dropped it all. And all I was doing was studying because I, I went into a school of engineer and uh, having social time party. So I want to go through the hormone system. You're gonna hear some, some scientific names and Really, don't worry if you never heard about it. Just bear, bear with me and uh, we will go through all of this. I will try to be the clearest as possible. Hormones. So first we're gonna in introduce them. Hormones are chemical, are chemical mo molecules made and secreted by endocrine glands. They transmit messages, command actions to organs, cells, other glands and retract controlling the hormonal balance of the body. Human hormones fulfill their role are, are, and are then evacuated by natural means. So it is necessary to produce hormones every day and make sure you bring all the necessary nutrients through the diet because it's constantly renewed. They are derived from cholesterol, such as steroid hormones, lipids, amino acids, uh, like peptide hormones. Sometimes other substances act as hormones when they have a different function, such as neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Hormones of performance. The hormones whose level peak are at or after exercises. So when you do an exercise, you're gonna get a rush of hormones, say in other world, will temporarily improve an athlete's performance. So which ones are these hormones? Catecholamines, catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine. They increase the heart rate, lungs capacity, and blood sugar levels. Testosterone, involved in the manufacture of proteins. So muscle formation after exercise, all in the recovery time. Somatotropin, growth hormone, essential for the production of many proteins. Mobilize fat, carbohydrates uh, during exercise, as well as glucagon and cortisol. Aldosterone and vasopressin, which together trigger the reabsorption of water and mineral salts by the kidneys to prevent dehydration. 
That was for the performance. See, there are a few. Mood hormones, in addition to effects on metabolisms, hormones have a role to play in the nervous system. Their variation following physical activity is felt on the mind. Serotonin, increased by physical activity and vice versa, reduces pain, perception, and depression, and disinhibition. Dopamine provides the brain with a dose of pleasure. Very interesting. And in addition, this neurohormone is linked to the performance of movement. On the other hand, it is one of the hormones responsible for addiction, habituation, effect of sport, particularly in intensive practice. Very interesting. Does the sport could uh, make us addict? For completeness, we can also mention cortisol, which is nicknamed the stress hormone. We have seen that it promotes the use of sugar for stress, but it happens to be involved in the emergence of anxious states. Nevertheless, the euphoric and antidepressant effect on, of other substances emitted during physical activity makes this negli negligible. And next, we're going to go into the hormones of hunger and slimming. Often the goal of sport coaching, weight control, is all about hormones. Let's continue a little bit with cortisol, which also has an effect on hunger. And during peak hours, 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., 9 p.m., increases. It increases also during a very intense sport telling the body that it must eat. eat. The opposite uh, is leptin, an anorectic hormone that is ineffective in overweight subject. So you understood that uh, the hormone that make, make you feel full. However, sport reduces the concentration of leptin, a low, which regains its effectiveness by controlling, controlling satiety and promoting the intestinal passage of proteins rather than lipids. Very interesting. Adiponectin plays a role of, in insulin resistance, making muscles more sensitive to it. So they prioritize, prioritize glucose and fatty acid, avoiding storage. Mm -hmm. The more adiponectin there is, the lower the risk of type 2 diabetes. Sport increases the concentration of this hormone, of course. Let's carry on. Hello, there are as well hormones of memory. Noradrenaline. So, very simple exercise. How to get a better memory? Do a few minutes exercising after learning something and you will improve the memory about this. We can understand that we are producing such a large hormones quantity from sport that when we stop, the body is needy, the brain is needy, the whole system becomes like a junkie without its drugs. Here comes alcohol. Some hate their life and need a weekend reset button that is activated by the popular Friday night drinks. Some cannot even wait until it's the weekend. I know what I'm talking about. Some drink as a recreational from boredom. Some drink, drink as an escape from the real world. And eventually, it becomes a habit, a lifestyle, even the cool things. We end up planning our weekends and where we are going to drink, what we are going to drink, and who with. It becomes really the goal of the week. The drinking has no social class, no geographical limits. The drinking is transnation, transculture, transracial. 
in some countries, we prefer quality than quantity. Hello, welcome to France. Sometimes I'm wondering if this is not more dangerous to link alcohol with a mark of success, luxury, or even a mark of culture. Here's some tips. Set books in your bar and it will become a cultural place. Set up some anarchist stickers and leaflets and it will become an alternative place. Set up modern furniture, high prices in your bar and it will become a mark of success. Hang a surfboard upon the ceiling at the bar and it will become a cool place. Set up TVs showing sport games and it will become a sport bar. Set up a Jamaican flag and play reggae music and you will have a super cool bar. We could carry on like this for a while. Generally, the society presents us alcohol as normal. We work in, in an industry, yachting, for the ones who are just uh, discovering myself, where binging is okay for the evening of a charter drop-off. Because we've been working so hard, you get only one day of a month, or even sometimes one evening of a month, and the whole crew suddenly sees it as an opportunity to push this famous reset button. Have fun, enjoy life, have a laugh, drop all the stressful situation on the table, take off for a beautiful journey that will end up the next day at about midday. How hard it is not to fall into social pressure and resist these drinks when deep inside you know that you deserve them anyway. How about calling it a crew dinner? Yes, sounds much better. Uh, but is it gonna be the start of a boozy night anyway? I'd like to share a couple of stories. A couple of weeks ago, when I went to Paris, I met this girl in the plane who was sitting next to me. It was kind of funny. She told me that once in her life she tried alcohol and she hated it. That's it. That's the end of the story. How short. I have another close friend who has never been drinking in her entire life. And I've actually heard a few people like that in the whole France. Another one is about a video that I was watching a while ago. The guy was a former alcoholic. He was saying that alcohol, alcohol, he was saying that alcoholism is the only illness where people are angry at you and tell you make an effort, stop being ill. When you look at, at, at it with this angle, it changes a lot the way you look at alcoholics because alcoholic is an illness and we are angry for people to be ill. He even uh, was saying that some of his friends drank as much as him, but were not considered as alcoholic because they could control it. How beautiful. Let's go back a little bit into the hormones, into the science. And let's have a look at what's going on with the hormones. So we've seen in the first part that hormones are so many different hormones for so many actions, reaction to keep a balance in the body. And that's out of our control. Why I was mentioning all these hormones at the beginning? Because now we're going to have a look at what's going on to the hormones when we actually put alcohol into our system. The body hormones work together in a finely coordinated and complex system to keep us healthy and functioning. Alcohol can interf interfere with the operation of the hormone system and cause serious medical consequences. 
Hormones act as chemical messengers to control and coordinate the functions of the body's tissues and organs. When the hormone system is working properly, the exact amount of hormone is released at exactly the right time, and the tissues of the body accurately respond to those messages. Drinking alcohol can impair the functions of the gland. The glands that release hormones and the functions of the tissues target, targeted by the hormones, which can result in medical problems. So it's chain reaction. When alcohol impairs the hormone system's ability to work properly, it can disrupt these major bodily functions. Production, utilization, and storage of energy. Reproduction, maintenance of blood pressure and bone mass, growth and development. By interfering with the hormone system, alcohol can affect blood sugar levels, impair reproductive functions, interfere with calcium metabolism and bone structure. We'll talk about the older ladies later affect hunger and digestion, we can talk about overweight, underweight, and increase the risk of osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Alcohol impairs regulation of blood sugar levels. Main source of energy, of energy for our body tissues is the sugar glucose. Body gets glucose from food and from synthesis in the body breaks down the glycogen, which is stored in the liver. The body blood sugar levels are controlled by insulin and glucagon. These hormones are secreted by the pancreas. They work together to maintain a constant con concentration of glucose in the blood. Insulin lowers glucose levels, while glucagon raises it. Other hormones are the adrenal glands and the pituitary gland back up the function of glucagon. They make sure the body glucose level doesn't fall low to cause fainting, passing out, or even brain damage. Of course, why I'm saying all of this, alcohol, alcohol interferes with all three sources of glucose interferes with the hormones that regulate glucose level. There are many ways alcohol consumption affects the body glucose level. Chronic heavy drinking, on the other hand, can increase the body's glucose level. Reduce the body's responsiveness to insulin. You remember insulin that is regulating glucose. Cause glucose intolerance, increase secretion of glucagon and other hormones that raise glucose levels. Cause both hypoglycemic, glycemic, hyperglycemic episode in alcoholics and obviously lower survival rates for alcoholics with diabetes. Chronic heavy drinking can cause glucose intolerance in both healthy individuals and alcoholic with cirrhosis of the liver. Many hormones in the body that regulate the reproductive system will be as well affected. Two main hormones, androgens, testosterone, estrogens. They are synthetized, synthetized in the testes and ovaries. These hormones affect various reproductive functions. Guess what? In male, responsible for sexual maturation, fertility, aspects of male sexual behavior. Women, breast development, distribution of body hair regulate the menstrual cycle, 
help maintain pregnancy. Chronic drinking can interfere with all of this function. Functioning of the testes and ovaries result in hormonal deficiencies, sexual dysfunctions, hi guys, and infertility. Some of the problems that alcohol consumption can cause by interfering with the male hormonal system include reduced testosterone level, too bad, male breast enlargement, hello, male boobs, altered normal sperm structure, impaired sexual and reproductive function, too bad. Premenopausal women. Chronic heavy drinking contributes to many reproductive disorder. Cessation of menstruation, irregular menstruation, menstrual cycle without ovulation, ovulation, my bad. Early menopause, okay, another one, guys, over 30, risk of spontaneous abortions. Most of the above reproductive problems were found in women who were alcoholic. Some were very interesting. Some were also found in women considered social drinkers. Alcohol impairs calcium metabolism and bone structure. So of course, hormones play an important role in maintaining calcium levels in the body, which is necessary, not only for strong bones and teeth, but also for communication between and within cells in the body. Alcohol consumption can interfere with these hormones and therefore calcium and bone metabolism in several ways. Calcium expression. So we have a deficiency in calcium expression. Disturb vitamin D. Very important vitamin, the vitamin D. The whole Europe is, is lower in the, in, uh, is lacking of vitamin D. Limit adequate absorption of calcium. So expression, absorption. So this way we are sure calcium is, uh, is slowed down. Inhibit activity of bone forming cell. Adversely affect bone metabolism. Alter reproductive hormones affecting bone metabolism. So let's say the bones are getting weaker, if I could say it in a word. All of this can cause calcium deficiency, which can lead to bone disease such as osteoporosis, a loss of bone mass, and therefore an increased risk, risk of fractures. This is a serious health threat for alcoholics due to the greater risk of falls and therefore fractured or broken bones. The good news is studies have found that alcohol's effect on bone metabolism and bone forming cells are at least partially reversible when alcoholics stop drinking. Such a good message. We will finish with cortisol. Cortisol, you remember the stress hormone. Alcohol consumption increases the body production of cortisol, not only while the person is drinking, but also later when the drinker is withdrawing from the effect of intox intoxication. I know a few people like that, the bad mood hangover. In the short term, cortisol can increase blood pressure, focus alertness and attention, but in the long term can impact body functions, such as bone growth, digestion, reproduction, and one repair. Last point, a bit more on the long term. Research with laboratory animals has revealed that alcohol can affect hormonal pathways that can influence alcohol-seeking behavior. 
scientists believe that alcohol seeking behavior is regulated in part by the renin angiotensin system, <coughs> bless me, which controls blood pressure and salt concentrations in the blood. What, what this is going to do? A pathological drive to consume more alcohol. Here's the dependency. Now we know what impact alcohol has on our mind and body. We kind of know why we drink. Let's have a look at what benefits I had to quit it for you. I will start with the money. I would easily spend 200 euros on a night out. Easily. But I, I brought it back to 200. 50 weekends in the year. I wouldn't miss a weekend if I could. And if I missed one, I would catch up. 200 euros times 50, that's 10 grand. Okay, you don't need a machine for that. 10 grand. And I'm really going minimum there. Yeah. Let's talk about the time I saved. 50 days, okay, once a week, which is really low. That's one hangover a day. So the next day, let's say I go out on the Friday, the Saturday is fat. That's 50 days per year, so almost two months. And I save this two months to do what I like, sport, reading, day trips, developing new projects and so on. Let's see about the health. When you have a boozy night, you don't only pay once to buy drinks, but you can pay twice if you lose your jumper or your phone or you have to pay the taxi alone to go back or you've misbehaved at the end of the night and you need a blood check and eventually you will have to pay for further health issues that you will get in the future after all we named um, i think now it's pretty logical so really, you could easily double the amount of money you spend on booze as you pay at least twice. So from 10 grams direct, then you're gonna be probably have another 10 grams consequence. So we are already at 20 grams a year. Mental, nothing better than an early wake up a slow morning, a coffee on a terrace, a walk to catch some sun, a sports session, a yoga class. So many good reasons to feel good during your day off. Social. Why waiting for the night out to get loose and open? Let's be open all day long, no matter what the days of the week. Go and talk to that person during the day. You will feel much more real than during a boozy night. So that's the question. How come I managed to spend the last 12 months without a single drop? I made the decision in advance compared to the date I picked to start. So a few weeks before my starting date, I knew I was going to stop. I had a life plan. When I say a life plan, it doesn't have to be for when you will be 50, 60, 70. A life plan can be on a month time. So that gives you visibility, a life plan, and that gives you goals. To reach these goals, I bet that alcohol will slow you down or will stop you. I don't think drinking will help you to reach goals. I ran out of money and regretted, regretted all the money spent on booze nights. So at the same time, I made the decision. I was really going down on money. And then I looked back. 
I looked in this 12 month spent. And I looked at the 10 grants I left in the toilets or against the wall, as you, you name it. And I checked and I said, fuck, I could be on plus 10 now instead of being at zero. Wow, that's a big shame. I wanted to be fit no matter day of the week it is. So I didn't want to be fit for four days a week. I wanted to be fit for seven days a week. I wanted to give the right example as a personal trainer and show by example, lead by example, not by words. So just people have to look at me and think that I'm a good PT. I don't imagine a good PT or a good yoga teacher uh, being drunk. I wanted to reflect health as we are launching our health and fitness retreat in Spain. Again, from 2019, we will be running this house uh, near Barcelona in the mountains. So we will be connecting Barcelona airport to the house the whole summer. So people like you can come and stay for a week in this retreat. You will be doing yoga fitness, eat healthy, mountain bike, hiking, breathe pure air, stand up paddle, canoeing, you name it. We'll do some um, massage. We will learn how to cook. We will learn how to sit on a chair, how to breathe. And in order to get good energy, good vibes in the house, where people will come and chill and reset themselves. I had basically to say, if I want to run that project, I have to be pure. Another thing I wanted to be a better me. So I picked a new thing in myself to work on in order to improve. So every year, you have to be a better yourself and improve yourself. So you're gonna pick one aspect or 10 aspects on your life to work on and give little step. And then you look back again and you look, wow, that year, 2018, I've been way better myself because I haven't been drunk. In the last 10, 15 years, I've been boozing way too much. What an improvement, what an improvement. All these points made a deep inside reason. There is nothing as reacting, such as I didn't want to spend money on booze anymore, I didn't want to feel hangover anymore. So they don't come from negative, they come from what you want, where you want to be next year, not what you don't want to. So just think, look at yourself, if you can improve on the professional way, on the personal way, on the health, on the fitness, by the way, we're here for that. What other tool can you give to yourself to look back at this time of the year in 2019 and say, wow, I actually made it. So don't put the, the bar too high and find something deep inside you that will help you to realize your goals. That's, that's what you want to do, yeah? When you're going into a taxi, okay? It's Saturday night, talking about booze, Saturday night, uh, you want to catch a taxi, okay? Taxi stops on the way, you jump in, you go inside the taxi and taxi driver is like, hey mate, where do you want to go? And you're like, well, just drive around. Just drive around. But you don't want to go anywhere. Uh, no, I don't know where to go. Just go for a drive. 
So this is the case of many, many, many people who have no goal and they don't know where they want to get, they don't know what they want to get, and even how is impossible to. So the first thing I would recommend is a very good exercise. Get a piece of paper, or maybe two, or probably three, and write down a list of goals. Whatever, whatever comes through your head, write down a piece of goals. Just this little tool will help you a lot. Once you have your list of goals, for each goal, you have a tool, you have a way to get there. You have something, you have a school to, to, to search for doing a course. You have a PT to find to lose these extra kilos. You have a, uh, a person to go and talk to and finally say what you think about this person. You have a flight ticket to catch to finally visit your grandma. You, you have a way to get to every of the single goals. Once you know all the ways that will take you to reach your goals, alcohol will be way behind in your list. Guys, if you have any questions, please hit me with a message. We have the, the page on Facebook, Monkeys Fitness. We have the page of on Facebook, Monkeys Fitness Yoga by Evelina. We have the website, monkeys-fitness.com. Uh, hit us, however, if that helped you, inspired you, informed you, do not hesitate and come back to me and share your experience. Monkeys Fitness, Florent and Evelina, we are here to serve you. We do believe that health, fitness, mindset, nutrition, work all together. I would just say guys, again, if um, are some questions. Okay, excellent. Some questions. So I have a question here from Patrick. Um, excellent question. All my friends are going out and they are drinking. What to do then? That's a, that's a very, uh, very good question because the social pressure is huge. Uh, it's unbelievable how much uh, people you, you believe uh, friends want to actually take you, take you back to the, to the other way and they haven't understood your, your decision. Um, very good question, Patrick. I would say if your friends are going out and drinking and you don't want to go out because you know you will be drinking and they will make you drink, um, I would say find new friends. Don't go. Isolate yourself from these friends. They are still your friends, but maybe they are the friends of the old Patrick. And the new Patrick gets up early on the Saturday morning, goes for a coffee, buys the newspaper, uh, walk along the beach, and actually the new Patrick is going to take a yoga class. And so guess what? When you're gonna turn up at the yoga class or to your training or to the gym, you're gonna meet other people who get up on the Saturday morning fresh, who enjoy your coffee on the sun and have a little chit chat about you. And guess what? You will have the same conversation than in a bar. Where you come from? What do you do in life? You will have the same laugh and, and it will be real because the next day everybody will remember this conversation and the relationship you will make with the people will be more real, less proficient. It's actually based on proper basis. And so, yeah, there is nothing wrong in finding new friends, meeting new friends and proposing your old friends a coffee, 
on the Saturday afternoon and they will join you, ask you why you didn't come and eventually they will get what is your, uh, your next step. And who knows, you will take them to that way as well. So yes, the social pressure is huge. Uh, I didn't mention it enough, but the social pressure is actually crazy. Uh, people don't understand your moves. Um, people always try to uh, to give meat to a, to a vegan. Uh, people always try to to get somebody who doesn't drink to drink. Uh, that's uh, that's quite funny, but I think you get used to it. And and step up, step after step, you you be proud of you of the new you. And as I say, you renew your social circle. And I would think that's it. You have to be strong at the beginning, but by the end you will be uh, you will be successful, Patrick. Uh, don't hesitate to come back to me in uh, if you have some doubt. Uh, if you if you want to talk about your goals, and uh, we are here for you, Patrick. So um, so you can join us in the community of uh, the ones who get up early on Saturday and uh, go to the sun and practice yoga. Guys, I will just remind you that if you want at some stage any cleaning products made with natural products, natural teas shower gel shampoo made with natural products any kind of quality product like this that you will use anyway um i will just ask you to uh, hit me with a message as i said uh, we do delivery as well for these products we shortcut the big distribution so what a way to make a better world and uh, actually get these small companies running instead of the large groups who end up uh, never uh, paying taxes. Guys, I wish everybody a good evening. I hope that's been helpful. Monkeys Fitness was happy to offer you this podcast slash uh, webinar. And big hugs from Florent and Evalina. Much, much love, guys. And uh, all the best for these new girls and for this new yeah bye bye guys it was good to have you tonight